I'm Ross Cessna, and uh, today we are graced with the fractal of the mysteries and an expression of the divine feminine in the flesh. Her beauty is manifested in her art, her words, and her presence on the earth, as well as her vibe. She also has the power to raise vibrations across thousands of miles, a catalyst for things I practice today and an ally in inspiring involution. Nixie the Pixie Marie. I can't <laughs> properly explain who you are who you are. I see too many facets to you and it would be an injustice to you. Besides, uh, no one knows you better than you. So if you couldn't, if you wouldn't mind giving a little bit of a in, encapsulating who you are before we get into the interview. Well, you said all the beautiful, most powerful things I think um, anybody has ever really defined. So thank you. I honor you for speaking your heart. Um, I am Nixie Marie, and I am a shamanic artist, a costume designer, and I, I'm really figuring out my label in my, my brand because I'm stepping into a mentorship position with women and being able to provide goddess empowerment. And so I just feel like I'm a conduit. I'm a messenger, and I'm here to be of service to a, the spiritual awakening and that is something that I have recently just completely owned and stepped into. So I have had a, I had a very big spiritual awakening as we all have been experiencing on this planet back in 2012 about so. And um, from there, my life has been completely different. I'm definitely a different woman and different person. And so here I am doing all these spiritual things that were so not a part of my world. Uh, before I was 20, about 20 years old, so. Yeah, I, I mean, I can relate. My thing came to me in 2012 too, summer of 2012. So it's interesting how that works because my concept was always that, not the end of the world, but it was a change of, of like a cycle or whatever. And, and when I look at it, it was the beginning of the change of my cycle. It's interesting how many other people kind of synced up on that. Yes, I've heard many predictions as far as what, you know, the, the beginning of a new world in 2012. And I feel that, I mean, it's definitely the birth of a new era and for us to really awake, wake up and see what's really going on and raise consciousness. So. No, abs absolutely. Um, I think that that's so awesome that you're able to, to take time out to do this and we get to talk like I'm kind of starstruck or whatever I know that you're just a person <laughs> or whatever but it's surreal for me to like when I started this in uh, the end of October or whatever and when I started listening to the positive head podcast or whatever and came across your stuff through that I never really pictured talking to you in, in this capacity so it's it's like a surreal thing <laughs> I don't know it's pretty cool um, the things that we can we can do now in this world and I think that's a big part of our awakening is to be able to connect and share um, from wherever in the world and to be the lights for each other no matter what and it's, yeah it really is um, Terrence McKenna always talked about like techno shamanism or whatever and it really is kind of involved in the internet or things like that it's so cool to like see that concept in, in practice, I guess. Mm. Um, I, I like to start things out uh, normally like with gratitude before getting into things. So I don't know if you'd like to express something that you're grateful for. I would love to. I am a huge advocate and enthusiast of, enthusiast of gratitude. Today I'm grateful for my breath and being alive and the beautiful community of support that I have that surrounds me. And I'm grateful for all of my gifts and to be able to be here in this present moment, sharing this experience in this planet with you. That, that's so beautiful. Um, the thing I'm grateful for is to the mysteries for manifesting you and uh, giving you the strength, wisdom and confidence to be who you are. I, I assume that it, to come into yourself and, to start that journey it's not it wasn't easy for me i don't assume it's easy for most people um so i i am so grateful that you were able to make that transition um i'm also grateful for the lessons that you've taught me before we've actually had like actual physical speaking in this capacity and um 
and for helping me bring ritual back into myself after I robbed myself of it because like it's been so fundamental in me and the thing that I find so beautiful about ritual is you're setting this intention and then you're creating this whole scene around it basically so it further ingrains the importance of that and you're honoring yourself and something bigger than you and I think that that's so powerful and beneficial my life has been so much better since I've been able to bring that back in and you like normalized me to myself if that makes sense after my experiences it was hard to, to be me so uh, I'm grateful for everything that you've um brought you to today I guess thank you oh thank you so much yeah you're very you're very welcome um uh, what quotes do you feel like best describe you or you are in tune with the most or? I have like Rumi has been a huge mentor for me as far as I'm a quote queen. And I love his quote that says, let the beauty of what we love be what we do. And that for me is exactly what I embody and exactly what I've worked so hard to be and to do and to teach and to inspire is just simply being what we are and to not be afraid to follow our dreams and follow our passions and that it doesn't necessarily like this, the struggle, the hustle of the societal norm is something that we can move away from and step into what we love so i'm i'm a huge put like i'm just i'm so loving how this world is stepping into so much more art and being able to speak our truth and finding ways to create income and abundance and wealth through doing what we love so that's my take on that quote and no, I, I really like Rumi a lot. I don't think I've ever heard that quote too. It's, it's very beautiful. And I resonate with what you're saying. It seems that there's this big flux of people um, finding themselves and then creating themselves after they found themselves and following their passions and their dreams. It's, it's so funny to me that we start out as like kind of a blank slate. Then we're imprinted with this concept of who we should be. And then as we get older, a lot of us wake up and we're like, well, shit, I don't know who I am anymore. It's like, how do I find myself? Then you have to like go back to where you started basically in lots of ways. It's a cool experience. I mean, I feel like a little kid at 32 getting to find myself and like getting to take such joy and pleasure in such small things like just going outside and being amazed by nature or things that people sometimes lose touch with. Like I've always liked nature my appreciation for it now has just it continually expands as the more I live through it, I guess. I don't know. It's Absolutely. Well, we're, we're really getting called back to Gaia and to be in, in connection with her. And that's why ritual has been such a big part of my practice because that's most of my philosophy is that we, I'm Native American on both sides of my family. So my ancestry line is something that has come down in spirit form to call to me and to work with and to be in connection with all elements. So she's just calling us. And for those that are tuned in and tapped on and, and really into themselves and have discovered themselves are finding themselves right back in nature. So. No, that definitely makes sense. I, I mean, some of the, the best memories I have um, are relative to different natural places I've been. And it's like, I've got to live many different places in the U S but it was always the nature that really drew me in. I mean, although I live in Ohio now, one of the best parks I've ever been to in the U S and I've been to some good ones is here locally. And it's like, I get to go walk around in these, these like amazing trees, little streams. And I just like lose myself. That's my quote unquote church. If I had a church, it would certainly be like nature or whatever. And I didn't know the Native American element of you, but it, it, it definitely, I find so much beauty in that culture. Um, and 
I got exposed to that um, when I was younger through my grandparents traveling around selling gems and minerals. And I can remember um, being in second or third grade and like wanting a Kachina doll or something like that. And it's like, I don't think many boys my age wanted a doll, or let alone knew what a Kachina doll is. I wish I remember which one I wanted now, but I'm sure it had deep symbolic meaning. I've always, I've always been called to uh, more of the earth-based spirituality because it makes so much more sense to me. Like mm -hmm. it, it just resonates with me more, I guess. Um, did, do you, did you feel like uh, when you were growing up, did you feel that you were different than everybody else? I always felt different. Absolutely. I always felt like I was trying so hard to fit in no matter what uh, circle I was in. And I was a tomboy total skateboarder and have grown up mostly trying to keep up with the boys. So me being a advocate of the divine feminine is just, it's, it's quite funny to me because I have always been very masculine. So um, that was, that's been a big part of my, my shift. But as a child, I just always felt like I was just different, you know, there, and it was just a feeling I can recall. I can't ex remember exact, you know, circumstances, but I just remember feeling like I was talking, I definitely had friends and fairies and other creatures of the outer world that I was, I could speak to as a child. And, and I'm really, I'm just starting to remember those parts of me now, you know, even speaking into that in, in this very moment and having memories. It's, um, Definitely. I mean, me and my sis, I have a sister who's, she's four years younger than me and we're complete opposites. And so it really, I think was a struggle for both of us at some time to really understand and accept that there was a difference between us and that I was, I was the, the black sheep of the family and um, the wild and crazy one. <laughs> but, <laughs> I can relate to that. <laughs> <laughs> getting into all sorts of awesome trouble. So Oh yeah. Yeah. I have an older brother and we have some similarities, but more differences, I would say. I mean, we still get along obviously, you know, but it's like, I think that that's kind of common for people that are on that kind of similar, similar path to you and I in many ways is that they just, the people around them are somewhat different than them and they have to find themselves through all these other perceptions that people have of them, I guess, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. It's it's cool that there's that kind of similarity there too. Um, so I'm going to ask you kind of a fun question now. Um, if you could have any superpower or if you have a superpower or superpowers, what would it be or what do you have as a superpower? It's so of course synchronistic that you're asking me this because I, I'm coaching a, a leadership program and I just asked my students this last Friday. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's, it's so beautiful that I'm getting asked this question. I, superpower, I just would love to morph into a bird and fly, be able to just like turn into a, a, a hawk or a raven and take off a flight and go into another world. That, that would be amazing. I'm a little bit afraid of heights personally, not afraid of heights. I'm, I'd be afraid of falling, but as a bird, you don't have to worry about it. You know, you just kind of coast with it. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a cool one. I like that. Um, I have a cool story about a hawk actually as my symbols, like a, a, a Phoenix or whatever. When I started recording this, the first day I tried to record and every time I went to record, my dog started freaking out. And eventually I went downstairs and looked outside to see what was going on. And there was a hawk over the awning of my house and it just flew away. And it was like so synchronistic and symbolic for me because it never happened any other day. And it was like the day that I was really coming into creating what I'm doing now. So it was like, it was like a sign. I don't know. It was, wow. it was awesome. <laughs> I have a raven tattoo on my leg, actually. So, oh, nice. So connected to that bird. Yeah, birds. My grandma had a bunch of birds growing up. I've always liked them. It's they have such liberation and freedom, I guess, and they they can go anywhere they want, really, because they can go in the water, they can go on land. You know, <laughs> they have like domain over the whole earth. It's it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Very close to source. Yeah. Um, 
what circumstances do you feel shaped your life overall? I was really feeling into that question, reading it when you sent me some of these. And I feel like my life started at, in 2012. So before that, my parents divorced when I was 18. And that was a really a big event for me that projected me into my spiritual awakening. So I feel like that was everything that changed for me. And it has put me on this path today. And I've, had I have found this path without that, I'm, I'll never know. Or maybe I did in another world. But um, And ultimately, just growing up amongst nature and feeling really called to the, the earth. And I, we had this really amazing green belt, is what we called it, in our backyard when I grew up. I grew up in Ventura for a little bit, and then I moved to Orange County um, <laughs> when I was eight, I believe. So I just always feel like being outside and connecting to Gaia and not even knowing at the time like that I was so tuned into it and no, a week, but um, also just, and then falling asleep again and through high school getting bullied and confused of who I was and doing things that were trying so hard to be not normal, like making sure everybody knew I was not this the same as them and um so I would just my whole life you know the whole life circumstances mm -hmm. have brought me to this point but those are some highlighters no that makes sense I can relate to uh the divorce my parents divorced I was in second grade when it happened but uh one of the ways that I really got the most relief in that time would be going out into the woods and losing myself in the woods for like hours on end and I would just go walk in the creeks and streams and stuff like I'm thinking of that now I haven't thought about that in a while but like that really was my second home in so many ways it's probably why I have such affinity to it now for because it it's just I don't know it's something different like I feel although houses and things are natural constructs in the sense that people build them I feel that we lost something when we moved into structures like we are. And don't get me wrong. I like the comfort of a house, but like. I could, I I, I could live in a teepee and a yurt. In fact, I've thought about living in a yurt. So. <laughs> I used to want to live in a yurt too. I mean, they're affordable and it's, I don't, I live somewhat minimalistically. Like I don't need a lot. I'm, Absolutely. I don't know. So that's. That's interesting. I'm so like somewhat nervous about this. That, like, <laughs> I'm sorry, what were you saying? I was just going to add to something that just came up was to add to my divorce and uh, not my divorce, but my parents' divorce and how I found myself in the electronic scene and EDM scene. And then I feel like music and sound really supported my healing journey. And then I found the festival scene and then Burning Man and, and that has been a big, big, huge part of who I am now. So that's awesome. Do you, do you make music or you just enjoy listening to it or? You know what? I actually just recorded my first track last week. Awesome. <laughs> so I've, I've recently discovered my voice and I, it, at a festival last year, I was gifted a, oh, and we're falling. I was gifted a, um my crystal ball and it activated something within me that began be, I began channeling mantras so I've been working on that with myself and trusting myself to go there and be that be that light that I can shine on in the music industry so I'm just kind of playing around with it and I have intentions to learn to DJ so it's kind of something that I love to play in all mediums and Never thought I'd find myself here, though. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I can relate. Like, I, my first uh, involvement with music was in high school band. And then I w messed around with turntables a bit when I was, like, 18 or so. Mm -hmm. And then I got into, like, hip-hop because I've always liked poetry. Um, picked up the guitar um, when I was moving to uh, live on the beach in Northern California for a bit as a wise decision. Um, but music yeah. is so fundamental in expression for me, and it... I, I thought that you might have some involvement in it some way. I just, I just never knew definitively. That's awesome. I'd love to hear your track sometime whenever you feel comfortable with sharing it. No, no rush. I can under, 
got together and started playing around. So it's just like the first one we did, but we're just playing and seeing where we can, where we can go together around it. Yeah. It's so fun to have that, that creativeness and just even just to play with it. I mean, when I first started doing music, a lot of it was just more for fun or whatever. And it's that way that's not the pressure of like some things. I don't know. It's like, I'm still trying to find my singing voice for like guitar stuff that I do. Mm -hmm. Hip hop, I feel that I, I have that down pretty well. Um, I do like yeah. conscious or thought stuff. So it's really just like my poetry to hip hop beats, which is, yeah, I would say unique. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, whenever you're ready to share it, I'd love to hear it. Um, the thing about that too is that like, especially with the shaman vibe, working with music further goes with that, I feel like, because I don't know, it is like chanting and it is creating this language is like the cultural operating system in a lot of ways. So you're like spreading that. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. um, so what positive lessons do you feel that you learned from your negative experiences? Mm, I love that question. I always try to look at my experiences in a positive light. And I really believe that everything in life is working, you know, for us, not to us. And it's, it's been from my own recent, like last year, I did really heavy shadow work and a lot of things came up to the surface for me in my relationships and my community and my tribe. And I, I put everything out, you know, on the surface for it to be revealed. So I could be exposed in a way that I was going to own it and be in awareness of it. So although at the time that was really challenging, I realized that I would be by being vulnerable and being real and authentic, which I had, in my past felt like I was not any of those things that I was, I was able to really own and, and stand true in where I am today and to be able to speak directly from source and have that connection. So clear rather than coming it, it coming in, in a, um, you know, mucky way that's not pure. So uh, that I would say for me in the past year, but um also, I had a, a time in my life where I've, I lost pretty much everything. I had my car impounded, I had my license taken away, and I just found myself struggling and surviving and not thriving and just living in mediocrity. And it was something that I wasn't really in awareness of what the type of energy that I was permeating out. I just was in this struggle and in the constant thought process of I don't have enough, I don't have enough and I want more. And it, it comes a lot from my growth in Orange County, which is a very, um, very like closed minded and ego image driven environment. So I have, I had to do a lot of work on myself to remove and detach from that and find what was really what I really am and what I'm really here to speak. So I believe fully that me losing everything was how I really found myself and my spirituality and getting really connected to my ritual work and how that saved my mental clarity and my purpose and everything here is just to really, you know, I didn't really look at it from a perspective of this is the worst thing that could possibly happen. At the time it was emotional and it was scary and I was like, what am I going to do? But I just made it work and I, I live in LA and I rode my bike around LA for two years and took public transportation and I hustled and I made it work and I was designing my collection and still having fashion shows and it was really powerful to be able to come through that and now be in a completely different light and so that's definitely a few of my big big ones the past few years. No, that's that's awesome that you were able to shift it and look at it like that, though. I've had some similar situations to that. I mean, I can relate to losing the license, um, impounded cars, uh, not having anything. I, mine was many times by conscious choice, unfortunately. Um, but now it's just like, I'm so grateful for those experiences because I know what that end of the spectrum is like. A lot of people never really get to understand that. And I think that there's 
so much value and and there was a time where i thought it was like the detachment thing where i can't be attached to anything and it's like even being detached to things is attachment to detachment is an attachment i guess is what i'm trying to articulate so it's it's cool to like build stuff up and it's nice to find other similarities in our stories i guess mm. um this is kind of another fun question what songs or bands have lyrics that most resonate with you at this moment? Mm. That's a good one. I have been really diving into this artist, Dea Dova. She's, she does chanting and um, mantra singing and I, I'm not one that really listens to a lot of musicians with with lyrics and words. So I find for me, music is is transformative where it takes me on a journey and it really connects me to me and my rhythm of creating and moving my body or however that looks like. So I really I resonate to the sound of the drum and I resonate to the sound of of deep like lo vocals that are usually over something like electric electronic i don't even want to use electronic but just transformative so dea dova has been a very big inspiration for me right now i tend to go through phases of different artists when i'm creating and they're usually what are inspiring me and, and fueling me so artists like desert dwellers and um, some of my other friends who are really amazing DJs put out some awesome mixes that I listen to. So I wouldn't say that there's like a specific lyric or anything, but right now I've been really working with the Dea Dova energy and her amazing, um, she does have a song that's called Return of the Bird Tribes and uh, there we go with the birds again. So I'm, I feel deeply connected to, to all that, but I just, I love when I can feel into like a deep transformative day and get into my paintings or my art or, whatever that I'm doing, so. Yeah, if you don't mind when this is over, maybe shoot me a link to that uh, song that you mentioned. I'd love to check it out. Yeah, I will definitely. So cool. Um, this one is somewhat nebulous and I think you've answered it somewhat, but I still feel the need to ask it. What philosophies, spiritualities, or religions do you find most aligned with your understanding? And then explain them as they apply to you. And it's not like a pick one and done. You can pick multiple ones, obviously. Yeah, I feel deeply connected to what we spoke on and highlighted earlier was the earth-based, earth-based, it's a tongue twister sometimes, <laughs> earth-based spirituality. And for me, that's just really, I, I started practicing witchcraft and Wicca and, uh, you know, then converted more into shamanism. And uh, I feel like that is what all of that encompasses is, is really the word, the word witch is nothing other than just being a woman who's connected or man that's connected to nature and all of its elements and works with nature to manifest and set intentions like with the moon. And so that is the closest thing to me as far as my belief systems and also Christ consciousness, you know, that that is something that we are all actively, I feel, resonating and getting to on a higher state and, and being in that state of samadhi, the highest states of that crown chakra of the kundalini energy. So that for me, I would, I most relate to when I started practicing kundalini and that I feel very called to go back to that practice. I give it up at, from time to time, but so I just kind of dabble in, in different forms of spirituality and paganism and and most of it all stems from i feel like the earth and and raising consciousness so no that makes sense I, i'm similar in that i mean i like buddhism i like shamanism i like i like to do yoga like i'm an amalgam of things like that because i, I feel that there's they work because they're true and there's not normally a lot of dogma associated with them it's really more like your understanding, which I think is a more genuine approach than saying, here's this list of texts, let's all follow the same thing, even though we all have different interpretations of it. Like, not to put it down, it works for some. At the end of the day, I have a sister who's a Jehovah's Witness, and her and I have really come to the 
the rounding realization that we really have very similar beliefs. It's just different perception and that we can, at the end of the day, the one thing that I am an advocate for is that we are being compassionate and love. So I have connections to Mary Magdalene and her energy of bringing love and compassion to the world with Jesus's teachings. So I just feel like that's another form of what all of this means, really. It's just simple. It's love and compassion. And that's all we're here to do and to teach. And yes, being connected to nature is, is a part of that. And that's really my primal roots and our primal roots as a society and where we've come from. So no, I get it totally. That's very well articulated. Um, back on the music thing, because I just thought of this question now, it's off the top of my head because you said you like drums. Are you familiar with the, uh, the hang drum or the hand pan? I am not familiar with that, no. It looks like a UFO almost, and it like makes this like really spacey tone. Yeah, actually, yeah. I had just recently done an event and there was someone next to me. I think he called it something different, but it's like a, it looks like a spaceship. Yeah, those are so cool. <laughs> Very awesome. He made yeah. Them. What's that? I'm sorry. He made them by hand, so. Oh, wow. Recyclable objects and materials. Pretty cool. Yeah, I, I imagine it takes a lot of skill to be able to, to tone that thing, or, or tune it rather appropriately. Mm -hmm. I've just recently come in like knowledge of them, so I'm like fascinated by them. I'm like, they're so cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, what do you perceive your life's purpose to be? You've kind of answered that one already too, but. Oh, life's purpose. Well, ultimately I am here to be a messenger and to be a vehicle of, of love and light and share my gifts to the world. And really I feel support women. And by that, I mean, for us to honor our self-worth. And we've just been through so much as women in this world. And as I've grown through my own and stepped into my divine feminine energy, I see and I feel that it is something that I get to bring into the world and support women. So that's this like new career thing that I never really saw myself stepping into so that's my my vision for the goddess collective and what i'm going to be doing with my podcast next week that i'm launching so awesome this thing that i'm still working through and and I, but i but it's literally just fallen on my lap and and like i said connections with mary magdalene there's a there's a big like mary magdalene tribe where we're all here to really speak her wisdom and support women in connecting to what we are here to be, which is just like nurturing energies and balancing the masculine and the feminine energies. So I'm not really sure what it looks like yet, but ultimately I'm really claiming myself and claiming my sovereignty as a healer and as a, as a artist and a, a light worker and whatever else. There's so many different terminologies, but um, yeah, there are. And you definitely have so many different facets. It's hard to really pin them all down, I would say. <laughs> or like, let them free, I should say. Pin them down. Yeah, kind of don't a, pin them down. <laughs> yeah, right. Let them fly like birds. <laughs> like doves out of a magician's sleeve. <laughs> yeah. um, no, I, I think that you're so well suited for doing what you want to do with leading women. Because you have such this compassionate vibe and you have such strength and i think that you can help other women wake up to, to their own strength in doing so i mean i've talked about before how i've not been the best person to women and it's more so my my own fault i mean it's all my own fault not more so but one of the things i'm really consciously working on is valuing women more and it's like being in a patriarchal society I can under I, I can't understand from a woman's perspective, but I can see how it would be difficult. I mean, historically, women have had to fight for so much, um, and it's not through fisticuffs. It's through like coming together, through voicing their opinions, through organizing things like you're doing, and it's it's beautiful to see that because I think one of the major problems in in the world is that male dominant mindset, which is based on fear. I mean, it's all fear. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, even historically, the reason they suppress feminine, from my understanding, is because of fear, because there's 
life comes from female energy in in my perspective. I mean, it's the life giving part of, of the fractal of the source, I guess is how I would define it. Not to say that men don't play a role in it, but I, I myself, I feel more in tune with the feminine energy. Um, and obviously I, I, I don't have the direct connection to it, I would say. But like with my experiences with everything, when I was healing, it wasn't like a male energy that felt like it was healing me. It was like a female energy. And the people that have helped shape my life for the better, for the most part, have been women. So it's like, I think it makes sense to me that that somewhat resonates more with me. I'm trying to learn like the male energy somewhat. And it's like, because when I expressed it, it would be the negative expression of it. You know what I mean? Like, right. And I think part of that's because the image that men get portrayed, and I don't want to sit here and talk about men when we're talking about the divine feminine. Um, speaking of that, would you mind um, talking about the divine feminine a little bit now, or would you like to come back to some other time and discuss it in more detail? I don't want to put you under the gun like that. <laughs> Well, I mean, we're already on the subject, so the time is now. Uh, well, you know, I feel that this, the whole word divine feminine and this m movement that we're seeing and the awakening of that and female, females rising is really because of us remembering who we are and remembering where we come from as women. And for me, I had to go through the process in my own experience of remembering myself as a witch, as a healer, as a shaman, as a medicine woman. And I really got to experience those past lives of myself. And then that was a part of my growth and awakening of remembering, oh wait, I come from this and that is my power and ultimately nobody can take that from me because it is the Holy Grail. It is what it, what um, Mary Magdalene's teachings are and who she was amongst Jesus is the Holy Grail is, is the protector of, of the divine feminine. So there is, there is, I was just in a, in a, sat in a five MEO ceremony right after Burning Man and our facilitator is a, you know, I'm looking for the correct terminology, but he's a guardian of the Holy Grail. So we have these light workers and light warriors here in this world that are our protectors of that and our messengers to be a conduit of that divine feminine sacred sacred power and as we just go through remembering all of these things that we are really truthfully here to do I feel that's just raising the consciousness and as I speak my truth it allows other people to tap into their truth and speak theirs so I have been so connected to the goddesses and really working with the goddesses on my own interpersonal inner growth, as well as shamanism, just really taking all forms of spirituality and really playing with them as, as tools to utilize my divine feminine energy. And I've taken many workshops on relationships and grace and how something that I learned was that there's like, there's been such a suppression of women and then there's been an uproar in women and there's been the feminist movement and there's been now this movement of us as women wanting to step into our power, but not from a place of using our masculine energy, but using it com coming from a place of grace. So using our energy to really just be graceful and powerful at the same time and not, you know, demasculating our men or taking from the masculine experience because we all have that divine polarity but we all play specific roles so as a conduit of that i feel that it's my purpose to share that share those messages with women and for us to remember our divine purpose here is to just be graceful and to be nurturing and even though we want to be dominating out in the world and be these amazing um, powerhouses of goddesses and, and business owners and leaders and speakers that ultimately we also get to remember that we are women and we have so much power and to not let for others who aren't maybe in that powerful position in their life and that want to, to get to just be reminded of that power and to be reminded of their, their self-worth, which is as a woman, that's our biggest, our biggest hurdle is 
our self-worth, owning our power and really connecting to that and using that as a vehicle and a vessel to break through the fear and the pain and the suffering and the, the suppression. So I've been through a lot of workshops lately in the past two years as I've been diving deeper into my own interpersonal growth and the things that I kept seeing were that women were suffering from these experiences and their self-worth. And I realized that that was also me. So I got to work through my self-worth, which is an everyday commitment. You know, don't wake up and go, I've got it all figured out. It's <laughs> like the reason I have ritual in my life is so that I can remember that I am worthy and that I am enough to be anything that I want in this world. So and that's pretty much my download for the divine feminine right now. <laughs> well, that, that's, that's awesome. It's going to take, I'm going to have to go back and listen to it because there's so much wisdom in there. I feel like, I think you, the way you speak things, like you speak it in such a way that like it encapsulates everything and it, I don't know, it just sparkles. Like you speak pixie yeah. dust. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. You know, my real name is actually Nicole, and I was gifted the name from us an Australian back when I was working at some fine dining restaurant in Orange County before I moved to LA. These Australians came in and they were just cracking me up. And I said, you know, they're like, "What? Is, what is your name?" And I said, Nicole. And they're like, "Your name's not Nicole. It's Nick Say." And I just was like, oh my gosh, oh my God, it is, that is my name. I'm going to take that. And then in the festival community, I became Captain Nixie. And then it's just been this involvement. And I spoke to a, a fellow sister who has been a really big supporter and advocate of me stepping into the teacher and the the facilitator or whatever I am stepping into and she and I were creating this name for me because my last name is Braley and Nixie Braley just doesn't work so <laughs> we were sitting there brainstorming and she's like what's your middle name and I said Marie and she looked at me and went oh that makes sense so uh, there's a there's a theory that is said that women who have an MAR or Mary or some someone in their in their name at all is a conduit of Mary Magdalene and that they're just here for messengers to support her so as soon as I claimed my sovereignty and my name and Nixie Marie it's like all of a sudden this this information and the, the downloads and I was able to channel and work with Mary Magdalene so it's it's very interesting how all of these things come out but Nixie the pixie has been such a evolving being. So and I think everybody's that's that's on a path like that is evolving. And I can relate to having certain things where you do one little thing in your life and then it like clicks and like a door opens for you or whatever. Or like you get like this information download. I mean, on my journey, one of the things was something I had to give up. And it was like as soon as I gave that up, all these opportunities that I hadn't had were right presented right to me basically and it's like I was like kind of frightened by it. like I don't know if I'm ready for this yet <laughs> but it's cool like it was like a good kind of fear I guess and I, I did well with it so it's it's interesting to hear the similarities in some ways in our stories although they're different how they sync up I guess uh, I'm just it's, it fascinates me how that experience is more common than I ever could have imagined I guess mm. Well, there's, there's always a divine reason why we're sitting here in this very moment sharing this experience and to be able to really get to know each other from, you know, a, a computer or I just, I feel you though. And I've, I'm so grateful and humbled to be able to impact you and other lives. And that's really what we're here for. And we're supporting each other getting through all this because ultimately it is, a, it is fearful stepping out of the spiritual closet and being able to speak truth it's it is a whole like homework assignment that never ends and <laughs> <laughs> stepping into it without like with, as a warrior and to not and to know that we're all supported and the more that we do it the more we're inspiring others to also speak their truth so you know we're really in this together and there's no coincidence it's all synchronous synchronicities <laughs> no that's definitely been my experience and I've had so many over the past couple months where it, like it just reaffirms me I'm on on the right path I guess because that's one of the things I've heard and shamanic cultures are viewed as a sign that you're 
going the right way, basically. It's it's always interesting to me. Mm. Um, if you had to describe your personal philosophy or condense your life and experience into a few words, what would it be? Mm. I'm going to dedicate this one to my spiritual mentor, who you, who, are, who you know, that just passed on and ascended. And I'm, I just started writing a book last night because it's time for me to share this wisdom and it's beautiful that you asked me. So we had shared a philosophy that I also spoke on the positive head called the ING philosophy, which was taken from someone he spoke to on how that this older being had lived so beautifully and healthy, healthy on the planet and just was so elated at such an old age. So the question was, how did you stay alive and healthy and, and so happy your whole life? And the person answered with, well, I was always ing it. I was living. I was breathing. I was being. So always emphasizing that ing by just being present, living in the moment, and always asking yourself, am I ing it? So I was up till 4 a.m. last night just downloading this book, and I feel my friend, my mentor, my brother, my fellow light being right next to me and being a conduit of that with me. And I am a medium and I'm stepping into that. And so this is just another form of that. And I'm just going, oh, of course, of course, this is what I'm here to do. It just makes sense. So that philosophy is something that I get to be a teacher of now. And I'm really grateful and humbled and to be able to have this wisdom implanted in me from someone that was such an amazing being and I dedicate all of this to him and all of my life's work to him now at this point because I just feel that he was the messenger very he actually passed on the same day as David Bowie and I feel that they were both from the same starship so um but he has got the just being able to smile and to be happy and to be present and to make memories and forget about everything else because at the end of the day and the end of life all we have is memories to remember each other by so that's that's beautiful. It, my eyes started to water up a little bit when you were saying that just out of the like respect and the the genuineness of that statement. Like it it's so beautiful. Um I have a couple more questions for you. Who inspires you? I think you answered that the kind of too. Mm. You know, I'm inspired by everyone, honestly. I I have a huge community that I live amongst and I'm constantly inspired by the people who are such advocates of love and support. And I, you know, at times when I was living in that scarcity mindset and didn't think I was worthy of having this amazing of a life and to be able to live amongst ascended masters and light workers and just healers all around that this is my world that I live in a Harry Potter magical fairy world is is incredibly inspiring so you know I'm most inspired by my 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 tribe and also there's the amazing things that people are doing in this world to really take action and step up and be healers and work with the earth and so you know I just I'm inspired by life yeah, that's a good inspiration. There's a lot of that going around in life. That's, that's, I like the way you talk. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Um, I had a shaman poem that I wanted to share. I wrote it a while ago, but I think you might like it. Um, I'll share with that and then we can close it up and I'll let you get back to doing work in your magic <laughs> um it's called the shaman when you've existed on the outside always on the fringe it's easy to understand those who stand within you see the forest from the trees the desert from the sands the source of the wind behind the breeze what's underneath the land many a mask used to infiltrate mask removed i can still relate in this space you'll find my place i'm neither here nor there a legion of allegiances, no single one declared. Equidistant existence, 
from the outside and the in. This is where you'll find me, the realm of the shaman. Crazy to the left, crazy to the right, too dark for the day, too bright for the night. I used to feel this was a curse to live on but not be of this earth. Feet on the ground, soul in the stars, my mind became my prison bars. The oddity, the bars were the key. When they turned, which, which when turned, freed me. Now I exist not of or within. I sit in the ether eternally, the shaman. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I thought that you might like that one. I had another one that I wrote um, for you specifically, but I can't do all my poems on one chat with you. <laughs> so <it's> like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm still getting comfortable like actually speaking them too I guess or like I don't know it's I've always liked that kind of side of me but I digress um <laughs> I don't want to talk about me I've talked about me enough on your interview <laughs> oh, beautiful and divine. um I, I'd only like to close this by putting stuff on the pyre so if there's anything like that you kind of have that you want to get rid of or whatever, when we go to close it, picture it just burning up in the ethereal fire of, and being released. You seem pretty light, like you're not carrying anything, but you never know. Sometimes it's good. There's something to release. <laughs> Very well said. Very well said. Um, and I'm going to put Nixie's links below. You can check her out on uh, Instagram, Facebook, her store. It's uh, Goddess Jumper. Yes, right now it's Goddess Jumper. I'm about to launch my new website. So, when is your podcast? Are you said next week too? Yeah, so I've I've got a few more kinks to work out as far as like the intro. I'm working with some artists and possibly doing my own intro. So, and then we're gonna go live on the thirtieth. So my format is really just gonna be like twice a week, and I'm gonna be bringing on different goddesses of the week that I've chosen selected to interview and then uh, just like on magic Mondays. And so that's cool. I look forward to checking it out and hearing some, some of the people you select. I got to find time. That's one thing. Like the more you get in, involved in becoming yourself, it seems like the less time you have for certain things. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Totally. Balance and figuring it all out and scheduling and timing is so important. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm learning it slowly, but that's cool. Uh, <laughs> I look forward to checking it out. And uh, if you remind me when you get it set up, I'll put a link to that in the description because I'll leave this up for a while. So you know what I mean? I'm not going to take it down. So when people hear it, they can check out your podcast too. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Oh, I, I appreciate you taking the time and being you and uh, just our interaction. You've added such uh, insight to my life and I'm tearing up thinking about it like it it really means so much to me that like the things that you did and just talk about and being you really have helped me so much and it, it's one of those things I've I've told Brandon before via Facebook like I don't think I can ever express my gratitude for you you guys being you and just uh making time to reach out and like talk it really, it, after my experiences and being so isolated, um, it means so much to me. <laughs> like, I feel, I know it's not silly to cry, but like, <laughs> I didn't think I would, I guess. Vulnerability is power, babe. No, it really is. I think that invulnerability is frailty and being vulnerable is the ultimate invincibility in the sense that nothing can hurt you when you accept yourself as, as you are. Uh-huh. Thank you for that. Um, but yeah, I just got a lot of love and respect for you. And it's so amazing that your vibe can reach thousands of miles away to a little podunk town in Ohio and resonate with someone like that. This shows you how much power what you're doing really has. Um, and what's that? Thank you. Oh, thank you. You're, you're very welcome. Um, Putting all that in and receiving that. Yeah, I, I appreciate you. Um, and out of respect for you, if you can close it down however you feel like. Uh... Hmm. Yeah, if we, I love to do meditation, so we can do a little guided meditation really quick. Um, 
to everyone that's watching and has a moment to sit down with themselves and close their eyes and take a deep breath in, breathing in life force through the nose and exhaling it out through the mouth. Inhaling love and exhaling fear. And one more of those, inhaling love and exhaling fear. And as you sit there with your eyes closed, just take a moment to reflect on all of the beautiful, amazing, supportive, loving beings that are in your world. Seeing them in your mind's eye now, focusing on anything that you want to bring gratitude for or appreciation to. Just taking a moment to send those feelings that come up for you. Feelings of gratitude, feelings of appreciation, feelings of love and light and surrounding yourself in an orb of a white lighted sparkly bubble. And as you surround yourself with this bubble, allow yourself to feel it through your body and push out onto the things and the people that you see in your mind's eye that you want to give your appreciation and gratitude towards. And as you see this orb expanding around your entire being, around your entire embodiment of your world, everything in front of you, see this orb expand now out into your, your room, wherever you are, expanding greater and greater and greater and bigger, expanding the world, the universe, sending frequencies of love and light and healing, honoring yourself, honoring your loved ones, honoring your path, your soul journey, sending out this white light of love, white light of love that's going to bring peace, harmony, healing, gentleness, love, tenderness, worship, bringing all of those things encompassing into this orb. And as you bring the orb back through the universe, through the earth, grounding it back into your being, taking a deep breath, inhaling, and exhaling, feeling that orb, putting your hands to your heart, sending love to your heart, love to your vehicle, your vessel that brings you into this world to experience this beautiful gift that we are, to experience the magic that we get to see every day and be every day. Honoring your temple, honoring your sacredness for being the gift that you are on this planet. Taking a moment to take a few deep breaths. Giving yourself full permission to release. Giving yourself full permission to be present, bringing your body, everything back into your body, moving around your fingers. If you've been traveling, went off into the ethers, into different dimensions moving around your body. And when you're ready, open your eyes.